Welcome to Gold Silver Pros. Everybody, this is Rob Keens with GoldSilverPros.com. It is Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, this is the weekly market wrap-up for the channel, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently today because of what's going on in the world and because of the data that's available. I think some of the stories are going to overwhelm some of the data this week, so we're really going to talk about that. As far as economic data goes, nothing new uh, really to speak of. So we're going to focus more and start on the gold and silver, and then we're going to talk about what's going on in the world that I think is going to have an impact on the gold and silver price, because I think that's why you guys really come here. So we're going to jump right into talking about the gold and silver market. CME Group is where we always go. Of course, that's where we're going this time. So let's load up the charts. Here are the gold futures on the CME. This is as of about uh, 4.47 today. I'm recording this late today, almost uh, 5 p.m. Central. You can see there's a little bit of a spike up in gold. Uh, uh, overall open interest, and usually what that means is the price will fade a little bit. And, uh, you know, the last couple of days we've seen it up and down. Gold's actually up just a little bit today at 20.37 at the time I'm recording this. Overall, the main thing to look at, again, is EFP. The EFP is exchange for physical, the explanation's right here, and exchange for physical trade down here in this uh, word bubble. An exchange for physical trade uh, in EFP is a private, uh, privately negotiated exchange of a futures position for cash, meaning futures in the US for cash over in the UK, and cash meaning OTC market or over the counter, uh, unallocated. Uh, supposedly it's allocated. I don't believe that. I'm going to continue to call it unallocated. It's just the way that is. You know, prove it to me if it's allocated. Show me the, the data. I'm an auditor. Um, the EFP mechanism and the reason we had 7,053 in a day across two contracts. And if you want to know where that number comes from, you go to EFP. February is no longer the big month, but it's still a sizable month. So you had 2,500 EFPs or redemptions over to or contract switches over to the UK market. And then 4,553 in one day, for the April contract, which is now the big one. You can tell by the open, open interest. These 7,000 EFPs that you see here and here uh, are occurring because there's price differences between the US and the UK and the rest of the world, and because people are hunting for gold, so they're trying to take delivery faster. Whenever you see a lot of EFPs, two things are happening. One, they're accounting for the fact that gold is too damn cheap in the US compared to the rest of the world. And two, they're hunting for gold, which if they can't get it on the COMEX, they want to go get it in the UK, or at least a shot at it. Where's the settlement data? I go over this every week. We're going to go over this very briefly. You guys know how this works. You know the drill. April's the dominant uh, contract month or the most traded one you can see by the contract volume numbers right here in this column. Da -da -da, right there. And it's up $6.3 uh, today. We go to Monday's data. It was up eight bucks. Very modest gains this week. Down about a half a buck. Friday basically went nowhere. Thursday up a buck something. And Wednesday down nine bucks. Now I'm going to tell you why that's the case when we go over the numbers in a minute, but gold's not done very much in terms of price. But what's happening is the market is saying, go get me some EFP, go find me some gold. And oh, by the way, gold's too cheap in America. That's what that means. I'm going to hammer this a thousand freaking times. I'm going to hammer it home until everybody understands how that works. All right. Moving over to Gold Charts R Us. First of all, thank you so much for Gold Charts R Us for putting this information out. Now, this is subscription information. I'm about to renew my gold charts are us. And I do it every year because they have the best collection of gold and silver data. I'm only showing you one chart or two charts from that site, one for gold and silver, but there are hundreds. And you can dive in if you really want to know what's going on. There's all sorts of good stuff here. I highly recommend it. Thank you so much, gold charts are us, for providing that. All right. Comex numbers, boom. American market. The rest of the Western markets, boom, in the ETFs, or for the most part, not perfectly, but a good representation of what's going on in Western gold markets. You can see here, we've had some gold come out of the COMEX and registered. That's liquid gold. Uh, eligible is stored gold, which may be made liquid, net, net. The last four weeks down almost a million ounces across the world, down 2.2 million ounces. And you look at the big chart down here, gold ounces held, it's come down for the last three years. So all you got to know, show it every single week. Why? So that people can understand gold's coming off when the games are played to keep it cheaper. Think about last week when I talked about the oil for gold direct trade. If you didn't look at Thursday's video, go back and look at that video. I talk a lot about oil for gold. If you trade oil for gold, you have excess oil. You're an OPEC nation, Russia, one of these other excessive 
oil nations, the U.S. could do it because we probably one of the biggest oil producers. We are one of the biggest producers of oil in the world. If you had excess and you wanted to trade that gold for that oil for gold, you could do it without spiking gold's price and alerting the world that you're doing it because you're doing a barter exchange. You're not doing it through the paper markets. OK, so there is a significant amount of oil for gold exchange and that prevents gold from rising maybe as much as it want. If all gold physical action came through the industrial markets, they don't. Mostly those markets are paper and a lot of physical trade goes a lot of different ways. Some of it goes that way. Some of it goes directly from mines. Some of it's oil for gold. Some of it's brokering. There's a lot of different ways that that goes down. So yes, oil for gold may keep gold price down, but not for long because when the economy goes into a, a severe deflation, oil prices will fall and gold will rise and that gold to oil ratio will rise. Okay. That's kind of how that works. On to silver, we've got this going on. So we've got a little bit heavy trade, but it's lighter than what it was. That's allowing silver to rise just a bit this week, just like gold. If we look at APs, you've got, you know, 355, nothing to speak home for, but you're looking at the big month right now is March. And then another one is May to a lesser extent, but people are rolling to May, you know, because they're getting rid of March contracts and adding May ones. You can see that in the last column, the change column. So now May starting to become the big month. It may be a few days away from that. Uh, but that's what's happening. Overall, everything looks pretty normal in silver, to be honest with you. Nothing like jumps out to me. I'm like, oh, anything is going on. And that's why silver is stagnating. It's not going anywhere. A little bit of rise this week, nothing much. Going over to settlements. Uh, yesterday's day, uh, sorry, Tuesday's data, today's data, uh, down 2.6 cents. Monday up 37 cents. Friday down 55 cents. Thursday up 38 cents or 3.8 cents. In other words, it's range trading at about the same spot, but what's going on physically going over to the silver chart from goldchartsrs.com. We can see then COMEX lost about 2.2 million ounces, most of it from registered, while some came into eligible, which is just storage. This is liquid. Registered is liquid. It's where they put it on the MLS, so to speak, of the market, and they say, we're going to trade it. It's up for sale. The rest of this eligible is not up for sale immediately. Some of it could be. It depends on why people are storing it. It's not owned by the COMEX. It's not the way that works. It's private ownership. Maybe it's owned by some of the participating uh, banks and other entities that trade. Maybe it's owned by clients. It's not owned by the COMEX, so it's not liquid. And the COMEX came out a couple of years ago and said, we don't know how much of that's liquid. So, you know, make your own guesses there. The rest of the world, Western world, uh, we've seen about 2 million ounces come in, mostly through SLV. Why is this important? SLV is the primary retail silver trade. When that goes up, it's an indication people want silver. It's an indication the price of silver is likely to rise in the near to medium term future because the retail trade is coming in saying, I want silver. Silver's cheap now. It's about the price it costs to get it out of the ground and get it over to a refinery and get it put in a bar coin format, actually a little bit less than that. It's probably about 25 to 26, you know, all costs incurred to get silver in bar or coin format. But it's about 22.50 or 23 bucks for most primary silver mines to get it out. Now, some of it fairly is produced or a lot of it fairly is produced as a byproduct. And that's what keeps silver price down because it's a byproduct. It's a throwaway to a lot of co copper, gold, lead, zinc mines. And so that's why silver can be below the cost of mining for an extended period of time, unlike gold, because the cost of primary silver mining only contributes a, not a majority of the silver in the world. The majority of the silver is produced as a byproduct of copper, gold, lead, zinc. And as long as there's copper, gold, lead, zinc, the economies are going strong, that silver is produced. When the economies aren't going strong, that silver is produced less, and that's why silver price goes up. Industrial demand has a huge factor in industrial production on the price of silver. And that's why silver goes up more when people demand it as money, because it also means economies aren't doing as well and there's less available. So silver is much more reactive to price, but it goes up after gold. Typically, if you go down here, more silvers rolled off the world markets the last three years. Same thing. I always show you. I'm not changing it up. Something to note about both gold and silver in the COT report. This is commitment of traders. It shows what people are doing. The part I highlighted in blue is silver. That's of as of January 23rd, because this report is a week old, always a week old, because they got to collect the data and do all that stuff. Well, the noticeable thing that I always look at are the swamp dealers, SWAMP, um, which are the bullion banks. 
They are almost back to even on silver again. After shorting the absolute crap out of it for the last month, they dropped 2,000 shorts and added 3,000 longs. That's a net position change of 5,340-ish contracts. It puts them almost net even, 32,000 long to 33,000 short. That move is why silver has been rising a little bit in the last week because the bullion banks released selling pressure. It's about all you need to know from this chart. The other side of it is usually managed money. It's there. And then producer merchants, you know, the normal trade. More shorting because they're protecting gals downside price risk. On to gold. This is gold. Let's highlight it. Get your eyes sought on the middle of the screen here. Again, a week old data, January 23rd. You can see that right here. Boom. And I'm right on the CFTC's website right here. So you can see I'm right off their website. Uh, this isn't a screen print. You can see here they did the same thing in gold. They released short pressure. The swamp dealers, the bullion banks, right here, released pressure, almost 11,000 contracts, added in 2,744 longs. What's that allowed do? gold to do? Rise back to the 2030 level. Why do you think it's rising? It's not hard to figure this out, okay? I do it every week. Uh, I just do it to show you what's going on. You know, when the bullion banks get involved, whatever they do, that's what causes gold and silver to rise. It just always is. I don't, you know, it's just the way it goes. So they control the markets very blatantly obvious. Oh, and one thing I also like to present, sorry, I did not do that this time. Let's go back real quick, just real quick back to that screen. Um, the largest foreign aid traders, which we know from the Office of Comptroller of the Currency Reports, are the bullion banks. If you look at short, 49.8%. Uh, and by four, 33.8. So they own the short in gold and they own it in silver, 23 point, uh, I'm sorry, 46.4 short, the largest eight, 31.9, the largest four. The bullion banks control that market, period, end of story. You can tell by the concentration of positions, period, end of story. All right, that's the gold trade. You know why it's been reinstrating? They're controlling it there. There's no big catalyst right now to cause gold to go nuts with the exception of what's going on in the war. Let's talk about that. The there are several big stories this week. One, I'm going to talk about the border crisis in Texas. There is a video circulating from a self-proclaimed comedian that says, well, a lot of gates are open. Why are you paying attention to the one? It's all media stunt. Well, no, it's not. Because I live in Texas, okay? And I live in Texas. And right now, when I picked my son up from school yesterday, they had blockaded the front of the school. You cannot drive into the front of the school. And you had to drive around to the side entrance where it was monitored by a gentleman there who is an administrator who lets you go in and out of the parking lot. First time in, in since my son's been going there and I ever remember driving by that high school that they have barricaded the front. Now, Texas a couple of years ago, due to some school shootings and also immigration, which was leading to higher crime across Texas, instituted a law which says that we must have a police officer at every... And essentially what it does, it puts a peace officer at every school. Every school in Texas, elementary, middle school, high school, has a peace officer, a police officer, basically, in the school at all times. The schools have gone on lockdown. The high school my son goes to has lockdown. You cannot get in there. It has a double door wall. You have to present your ID to even get a badge. You walk in. It's a man trap. You walk in the first one, you get your ID. Then the girl, the girls buzz you in. Then you walk into the front office. There's another two doors to get into the school. You have to go through four doors and three girls. And if there's anything that happens, they have a buzzer because I asked them and I asked the, poli the police officer, I have a buzzer, boom, that police officer gets it. He's up front. And not only that, but they're barricading the parking lot so that people can't even get in the parking lot. They don't let you anywhere near this school. Okay. Nobody's getting near the school. Why is that going on? That elevation of security is because of what's going on at the border. And the crime statistics are off the charts in Texas. Not only in Texas, we're seeing it in California, Arizona, New Mexico, and it's starting to migrate in. This is a crisis. The governor came out and said no more. He's using um, the Texas National Guard to secure the border. He's art came out and said, I saw a, a video clip of him today. If Biden nationalizes the guard and takes it away from Texas, they're making other plans. And I think Abbott said he's already done or planned to sign into law. This may have already been done by the time I broadcast because I heard this earlier in the week. Legislation either now or about to come that says that any police or official officer in the state of Texas can arrest an illegal alien, not just the border patrol. And that's one of the, so we can roll out sheriffs, we can roll out constables and police, I think, and all sort similar sorts of sworn and peace type officers. I don't know the whole list. 
that can arrest an illegal. That's now law in Texas. And I've seen the crime rates jump. I've been looking at the crime rates and they've been jumping, especially violent crime. So it is an issue and it's causing some instability. You got 25 states, governors supporting Texas. And this looks like you've got two factors aligning, not only Fed and state, but you got different states supporting Texas or not coming out and supporting Texas. Will this lead to civil war? Don't know. It's a major issue. The, the, the cohesiveness of the union of the 50 states is now in trouble, serious trouble. And this is going to go down in history books. Now, I don't know if this is going to lead to anything substantive on our soil, but it ain't looking good. Okay. And that's a huge story. And take it from me, it lives in Texas. The crime's gone up. Schools are barricading. There was no announcement, by the way, to parents that they're barricading. I get an, a list of announcements every day from the school. Not in there. I'm sure we'll get one later this week. But when I drove to the school on Monday, I was like, whoa, look at the barricading. You know, that's not normal, but they're doing it now. They're they're preventing ingress and egress to the schools. And, you know, when I last time I went down to state capitol, there used to be one guy with an AR-15. Now there's two positioned on every stairwell and at every level in the courtrooms, the county clerk's office. All the government buildings are now very heavily armed. Why? Because I ask them and they say because of potential crime and the threat and the risk. That's what they tell you off, you know, off camera. I don't have my camera with me. That's what they tell you. And, and I know that I've talked to school officials. I've talked to city officials. I've talked to people in the know. And I'm not going to divulge names, but they're worried about crime. Crime's a major issue right now in Texas, California, New Mexico, Arizona, and it's going everywhere. So for those of you that are believing some comedian that says, oh, it's not an issue because this gate down here is unlocked. No, it's been an issue for years and it is an issue and it's continued to be an issue and it's something we need to take seriously. And I'm hoping that the rest of the states support Texas because I don't mind immigration, but when you have that much at one time, it causes problems throughout history. You see it in Europe, you see it with the protests in France and in Hungary and in Spain and all these places. And now it's coming to the U.S. You know, unfettered migration is an issue throughout history. It always has been in the decline of civilizations. It always, every single time. I've shown you the research from John Glob. I've done my own research. Every single time, this is one of the markers for decline of civilization. If you want to know where the U.S. is going, look at the economy, look at the culture, and look at the politics. And this is one of the culture and political things that's a milestone throughout the history of the world to record a history when the dominant nation state began to wane was this issue right here. Fighting among these types of policies, border control, and then there's also the economy. The Fed, by the time you see this, or the next day perhaps, is going to announce whether they're going to do interest rate cuts or hold steady. I've been watching the news all day, Bloomberg, I've been reading CNBC, the mainstream financial press, and they're basically begging the Fed to cut rates. They're begging, please, Fed, cut rates. We need more money. We can't survive. They're deathly afraid. You know why? They're seeing the earnings reports. The tech sector is being slammed, except for the big companies. Earnings reports are coming out bad for a lot of companies right now. The financial press knows what's coming. They know we're headed to a major recession. They know because it do, the, the earnings reports do not lie. And it's an issue. And the financial press is glossing over and begging the Fed to cut. And I think if the Fed cuts, they're in trouble because they need that five percentage points minimum. They may need 10 percentage points this time to cut during a recession. And they know that. And that's why they're raised to five. And if they cut now, they're removing ammunition. Now, I think no matter what, the whole system is going to eventually blow up. That's the way these systems work. But the way the Fed is managing is they're always behind the curve. They're behind the curve. They cannot manage this. The bank term funding program that we talked about also last week in last Thursday's video, along with oil for gold trade. If you haven't seen it, go watch that video. I have an update on bank term funding. What is that? Last March, when we had three big bank failures, second, third, and fourth largest in history, I think it was First Republic, Silvergate, and SVB, they did the bank term funding, which allows banks to put whatever debt they have, good or bad, to the government and get a loan on it. And then they can do that through March 11th of this year. And then after that, the, the Fed said, we're not going to extend that. And you have another year till March, I guess, 10th or 11th of 2025 to pay it back. Well, they're not extending and it started at 40 billion, now it's up to like 130, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and that saved the banking system. Well, if the Fed actually pulls back that punch bowl and they're just going to use general interest rate policy with the federal funds rate, they're not going to be able to, to, to save the economy. And, and I don't think 
that their guaranteeing of debt was going to save it anyway, just kicked the can down the road, but it prevented basically a free fall waterfall collapse of the banking system. Well, if they pull that away and they just use general interest rate policy, it's not going to stop a free fall, a continued free fall of the banking system. Look at what's going on with the real estate sector in China. It's another big story. Evergrande order to liquidate. They're gone. History. What did we talk about last year? Evergrande, Evergrande, Evergrande. Chinese real estate's going under. China's in trouble. Evergrande's toast. Okay. This is what's coming to the U.S. and China. And this is going to cause world powers to get really irritable. And going to the world powers note, they're on zero hedge. It was reported that North Korea is thinking about doing some military skirmishes. I don't know it was full invasion, but attacking the South Korea. And was that the 50th parallel that the U.S. guards with something like 50,000 troops? Please, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm using data that I looked at maybe a year or ago. I don't know what the numbers are now. But it was about that. It was about 50,000 troops guarding that, you know, parallel the line. And North Korea is making overtures that they're going to go attack the South. That was reported in Zero Hedge, at least. That's my source. And that's on Twitter, too. Wow. And then you got the escalation of the war. First, it was uh, the Houthis in Yemen. And now it's Iran. You've got some neocon centers that I saw quotes in the press that I saw that says, go bomb Iran or we need to take care of Iran. So that Middle Eastern little pesky war, I said, was going to turn into a much bigger deal. And it wasn't just the Gaza Strip. I mean, you got two other countries involved. And that thing is going to become a power game. Mark my words. Everything I've said about that da, 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 just keeps going. You know, and you, and you got Biden saying, yeah, oh, we'll approve border security in Texas if you give us money for these wars for Ukraine and the Middle East. Oh, yeah, we'll, solve, we'll, we'll help our border issue now if you let us go bomb half the Middle East. You, you don't think that that's going to become an issue? Oh, hell yes, it's an issue. It's a major issue, guys. It's getting worse. The economy is getting worse. The wars are getting worse. What did I say about 2024? You're seeing it. It's here. It's now. We're in the quickening that I've been talking about for three years. We're in it now. All right. Things to worry about. Those are going to be cows for gold and silver. You wonder why you got gold and silver? It's for these types of things. Now, gold and silver aren't moving right now, but they don't typically until you get to crisis stage. They'll get there in crisis stage. In fact, the first stage of the crisis stage, it may sell off. What's the sell off? It's not physical. I mean, some people get redeeming physical, but remember prices are determined. What I do at the very beginning of this, this broadcast, and I do every single week on the weekly market wrap, it's the derivative trade. Derivative, derivative, derivative. Paper trade drives price. So people dump their paper positions and that's why gold and silver go down. But then the physical trade overwhelms and the prices go because the traders are like, nope, gold and silver is in demand. We see the risk. We're going long. And they're making money on the trade, but they're also accounting for the fact that gold and silver needs to go up because it's a crisis asset, gold first and then silver. And that's what's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen during 2024. I think we'll see gradual price increase in 2024. I said maybe back to a new all-time high, 2200-ish, maybe 23, you know, if it really gets interesting out there in the world. If the election gets interesting, and you think about early lead in the Republican primaries, it's uh, Trump, a very distant second is Haley. DeSantis, I think, I think pulled out and supported Trump. I don't think Vivek is going to be there. He's a little bit too young, I think, to get all the votes. It's going to be Trump winning that, I think, based on early returns. We've got to see. And it's going to be Trump against Biden or whoever else they put up there. Uh, Trump would smash Biden right now, according to early polls. And so it's going to be interesting to see how the, the party in power, the administration, deals with that. And every decision that they make up to there. Um, and that election is going to be huge because it's going to determine a lot of things. Our war policy, foreign policy, economic policy, political policy, border policy, all the things I've been talking about. And are there going to be changes or more of the same? And that is going to be what I think is going to be a crisis election. Because I think we're going to be in so many different crises, external wars, internal conflict, border control, uh, economic issues, people don't have enough money, job loss potential major nasty recession, all of that's eventually going to drive the gold and silver price. Now, the timing of all this, the election, but also the events as they unfold this year is going to be what drives gold and silver up. And remember, there's a little bit of a lag, so you got to give it 30, 60 days, and then maybe it starts moving. Sometimes it moves overnight, but I'm talking big bull moves, 30, 60 day delay. So I think that starts this year. I don't know where it goes, but pay attention to the election, pay attention to the events. Get another bank failure, boom. 
it's going to hit gold very quickly. It it may drive to all no, new all time highs, twenty two ish hundred. To stay there though, we need the negative news for a long period of time. I think that's probably what's going to happen this year. But watch the news as it happens. I told you twenty twenty four is going to get frothy. Was I wrong? Expansion of Middle East war, Texas border crisis, twenty five states aligning with Texas trucker convoy from Florida to California. Biden saying I ain't going to help you unless you help me fund the wars. Big election year. It's written all over 2024. We're in Alice in Wonderland now. It's upside down world. It's Stranger Things and the upside down. It's not what you think it's going to be. It's going to be something different. We're here. We're there. We're now. That's what it is. And uh, that's what I got to say today. I was very story heavy today, but I think the stories drive the markets. The stories drive the markets. So I gave you the markets first. We talk about the stories we're driving. Those are the big ones. What's your opinion? Throw it in chat, uh, in the premier chat, or throw it down. If you get here afterwards, throw it down in the comments, and I'll, I'll come comment with you guys. For this week, that is going to do it. This is the weekly, mar weekly market wrap-up for goldsilverpros.com. Uh, visit us. The online store is www.goldsilverpros.com. That's how you get there where we have deals all the time. You can go to the website also. Here's some of the deals we have right now. You can go to the website also, click on discount and fill out the form and you'll get those prices you see on your screen as well as other discounts on popular bullion. And I will call, email you back, get that set up, sent out an invoice. We'll get it funded and I'll get that sent out to you. I have any amount of inventory that you want right now because I can either ship it from my store, I can ship it from suppliers. I can drop ship straight there. So if you want 50 million, I can do 50 million. If you want you know, at least a hundred dollars in, in silver, I can do a hundred bucks, a hundred dollar order minimum, but we can do it all. If you get enough order size on the discount page, I do free shipping as well. So I try to accommodate people who are ordering any, anything in bulk. It's there, www.goldsilverprose.com on the store. If you have any questions, I just reach out to me and I'll be happy to address it. All right. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much. This has been this week's weekly market wrap up and our deals. Until next time, stay tuned for Thursday. We have another content out, which I think you're going to find very interesting. I'm not going to hit it this time. You guys have to come and see, but I think you'll find it uh, very well worth your time. And thanks so much for sticking with the channel and supporting the new store. Appreciate it, guys. We're a success because you make us one. And uh, I thank you very much for that. Until next time, Rob Keeps, www.goldserverpros.com. Mm -hmm.